everybody, Ryan here from Cold Harbor, and we are sitting here with Josh from Hollow Sun, and it's pretty nice to be sitting because this is the first interview that we're doing <laughs> that we're actually sitting down in a proper, I would say, more studio space. So it, it's kind of nice to come like off the show floor and just take a break for a second from the noise yes. and the craziness. Yes. Everybody yeah. wants to come to the shot show, but when you're here, you don't realize it's just sensory overload, 24/7. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's going on. And yeah, I think I got like 12,000 steps in yesterday, just yeah. getting back and forth to all the different shows. So, and probably yeah. like one hour of sleep. <laughs> so yeah, we do try. We do try. Yeah. So <laughs> there's probably a lot of Hollison videos out there, but we're going to be, because, you know, we're not doing night vision, we're going to be focusing more so on their night vision and thermal line of products. So Josh, I'm going to let you kind of have the floor here. Yeah, and, so uh, we'll kind of go through this. Yeah, 100%. So we'll start just kind of answering the question that I know that every single person in here has is, hey, Josh, you guys showed us the DRSs last year. Where the heck are they? We would love to buy one. And the answer is the DRS Night Vision is shipping this week, and the DRS Thermal will follow shortly behind that, so maybe two or three more weeks after that. So personally for me, I'm really excited about the Thermal. I mean, I think the DRS Thermal just offers incredible capabilities. One of the aspects about this site that I think a lot of people aren't kind of really taking into consideration is the fact that you're not looking at an OLED screen like a traditional thermal that yes. has a refresh rate where you have to worry about panning and stuff like that. Because you can just drop down the front of this window, it's still just usable as a red dot site. And so people are kind of saying like, oh, well, why is that interesting? Well, because now I have a unit that can do a multitude of different things, and it's not that rifle in your safe that has a thermal on there that you never take out and shoot. And so it's one of those things where now I can just take this and use it like a red dot 98% of the time. I can still use this to actively aim with night vision. I can bump this down into the, into the, uh, the red dot. So down it does the, have night vision settings. Yeah, 100%. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So you can still use this just like you would our standard aims unit. And then now you have the ability to flip up the cover, turn on the thermal, and you have 10 hours of thermal time to go. 10 hours. 10 hours, yep. So it just offers a lot of functionality. And if you want to, just grab some 18350s. You can quick swap these, put them in. They got another 10 hours. I'm sure somebody smart and maybe somebody in the night vision industry will come up with a battery pack that will connect to this magnetic port. And you can have a little battery pack on top of your rifle or something with maybe two more 18350s. Just saying, maybe somebody should do that. Um, but I'm really excited about those. They're shipping soon to answer that question. Moving on to probably the product that everyone is crazy, crazy excited about this year is the new iris yeah so, when you guys dropped that the internet kind of blew up took the world by storm it's it's uh yeah we tried to kind of do a slow release last week and kind of show off some of the new products mm -hmm. as we were getting close to it and i had a feeling this one was going to be pretty special for people the night vision market with lasers has just kind of been mm, how do we say difficult yeah uh, there's not a lot of options the options yes. we do have are a little difficult to acquire yes there's maybe some unregulated uh type situations and so yes. for us Obviously, because we're playing uh, at a little bit more of a bigger scale, we have to follow some FDA rules and regulations about this. But because we're using that new Vixel uh, technology in here, we can really ramp up the horsepower on the IR illuminator, which I think has been kind of what a lot of people are looking for. For sure, for sure. Most years. people don't look for the laser to be more powerful. Because right, yeah. The laser's already so intense that the yeah. night vision can usually just pick it up even if it's a few hundred meters down. Exactly. But they want a more powerful illuminator so that they're able to actually illuminate the target, see more right. around it. And so the cool thing about this too is like you're talking about illuminating that target at different distances. Yeah. This actually has an adjustable IR illuminator beam. So simply pushing this forward is going to widen up the whole beam so I can see a lot more of the frame, pull it back and really tighten that down to go, hey, what is exactly right there in distance? So. And what I really like about this is that there's no, you know, some lasers have it at the front, so you have to put your You're hands kind of there, in a weird grip. Or yeah. some lasers have it in the back. I know your older lasers had it in the back where there was a knob. Right. And the knob actually works really well, but the problem but, is, is it takes up some real estate actually. Yeah. So on a shorter gun, you're not able to butt the switch right up to the laser, or you have exactly. a little bit, a little more space considerations in mind. And I did feel the switch. Is this going to be the final production version of that? So this is still very much so in the prototype. Okay. Today. So there's a lot more improvements and bells and whistles that we kind of need to do and get ready to go. We're going to release these in about Q2, so we have a little bit of time to kind of work on them and take the refinements. We're sending them out for T&E samples. You guys probably saw a Dark Industries was rushing one of the full power ones recently. Um, and so we're kind of just getting the feedback and working on getting them out to the right people so we can get their information and see what exactly it is that they're looking for. Uh, we want to knock it out of the park and make an awesome laser for everybody that comes in at a price point that people can actually afford. And totally. with this being around $800 uh, on map, I mean, I just think it's really going to crush the, uh, the market space and everyone's going to have a really awesome entry level option that's not going to break the bank. Yeah, I think it's really cool, man. Might I just have a look at yeah. this? So I was playing around with this earlier and I actually really, for, for those asking people, some people have asked how smooth this is feel. It feels pretty good. It's it's kind of tough to move here, but when you have it on the rifle and you have the whole leverage yeah. of the gun on you, yeah. it's actually very easy to adjust. 
Um, just a few things on the operations of this thing. So, yep. so what is the UI kind of like? Because there's been some questions on that. How does that work, and what was yep. the design process behind that? So the UI on the back of the uh, interface here is kind of, uh, I would say, still very much so in a flux. We're still working on kind of figuring out I exactly see. how this back of the unit is going to be. One of the main goals that we wanted to do was drop down a lot more of the electronics off the sides of the rails to help shrink the overall profile to get it lower so it's not uh, blocking any optics and stuff like that. So you can see that we've reduced, uh, or kind of reduced, we've just moved the crane port a lot lower on the unit. So and that's a get, standard crane port. Correct, yep. And then you can get your switches a lot closer. On the back here, we have a, 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 the mode uh, for high and low and off is in the center. So this is just a very quick way to kind of switch in between those two. In the middle of this, there's a single button. And then when you click the single button once, it will display a color. There's four colors. Each color designates to obviously visible laser, IR laser, IR laser plus IR illuminator, or just IR illuminator. So once you memorize the lights, you just simply click and hold, and it will rotate through different modes. Once you're on the mode, it's locked in. Okay. So, kind of how we're doing it right now. This could possibly change in the future. It might end up being another switch that's similar to this. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is just kind of the current iteration of the design that we're attempting right now. Okay, very cool. And it uses a single SEER 123? Yep, correct. Is yep. there an expected runtime on the... Uh... Um, I, I was hearing something along the lines of uh, upwards of 100 hours for light okay, and so laser together. Very long. Yeah, incredible. The Visa technology is really great at being much more power efficient and helping with that. So there's a lot of people that don't know the difference between a conventional laser illuminator and right. then a Visa illuminator. Can you maybe break that down for some of our viewers? Yes, yeah, so I think it's just kind of make it as simple as possible for people to understand is if you've ever seen some of the um, maybe more inexpensive lasers in the market, there's a lot of fringing and kind of, uh, mm. I guess you would say, Petri like dish kind of look. digital noise yeah, yeah. that's happening yeah. on it. And so the Vixel really helps to kind of make that a perfectly round sphere so it looks really nice and crisp. Uh, and so the, basically having that set up in here with the IR Illuminator also is a great way to increase the horsepower while still maintaining eye safe frequencies for the FDA regulations. Because honestly, we would love to make awesome high power lasers for everybody, but it turns out the FDA is pretty upset about that uh, and they don't want us to have any fun toys, so we have to work around it's it. But maybe similar one in Canada too, so if I you design this imagine. for the US, it's, yeah. it's going to work for us up here and we yeah. do plan on carrying this. Yep. Um, what do you think the ETA is this, on this is? I might have missed that earlier. So the ETA is going to be around probably Q2 is what we're looking at right now for a final release for this. Uh, one thing I did want to note is like we heard you guys' feedback on the whole uh, quick detach mount. Yes. We get it. It's a standard cross bolt. Now just crank it on there and leave it on the right. Most people so. don't even take their lasers off. Ever, so <laughs> the cross yeah, bolt's good. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot more sturdy and it just locks up well. So obviously you pulled in the switch that yeah, you I'm have there. Yeah, pulled the switch. I just got handed this. Right. Uh, yeah. So the old Hollow Sun switch was kind of this bigger thing. Left uh, a little to be desired. Uh, yeah, let's yeah, put it let's that way. This that. is uh, really nice. <laughs> That's all yeah. I can say. It's really nice. It's pretty small. It's very similar to some some aftermarket switches out there that yep. are really tiny. Um, and this will come with the laser. Correct, yes. We're also working on a dual lead switch, so you'll have dual crane ports. And the reason why we're doing that is because we are also offering a new rifle light. So transitioning over to this a little bit, uh, the rifle light is going to come with two different tail caps, so one for the crane port, uh, or you'll have the clicky cap just for pressure if you want to run it that way. So this rifle light uses a crane port, not the standard trip bar port. Yep, yep. Okay. We just figured we'd go with both of the dual leads and make no, it as totally simple fine. as possible. Uh, on this as well too, this has a USB-C, or sorry, a USB-C for magnetic charging. Cool. So if you're on the rifle and you don't want to pull out your whole battery head and take everything off, you can just leave it on there and slap it on the USB-C. Uh, on the mount itself, we don't want to reinvent the wheel, so it's a scout mount, so all your guys' scout mount stuff is going to work just fine. Yeah, I was there. just going to ask that. Yeah, then. of course. Yeah, and That's we're not important for a lot yeah, of people. We're yeah, we're not. We get it. You guys have tons of invested stuff already in your uh, ways that you like to set up your rifles. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. In the box, though, if you don't have that stuff set up just yet, you're getting into night vision. You'll have a Picatinny option as well as an M lock option. Beautiful. So you can swap awesome. in between the two. One of the cool things about this as well is the is the amount of features that you're getting for the price. Hundred or sorry, it's gonna be 180 dollars with a thousand lumens and eighty thousand candela. So quite a bit of horsepower for 180 bucks, and you get all of that in that package as well as a single button I've switch. So. It's actually really small. I, I like the form factor of this a lot, and one thing that I wanted to point out on the show floor was kind of hard to t it's kind of hard to do here, but the tint of this light is actually pretty good. It's, yeah. It's yeah. got a decent, from my eyes at least, a decent color rendering index, mm -hmm. and that I find that for me it's it's pretty important because a lot of these, a lot of lights coming out are really blue, <laughs> yes, or yeah. really orange yeah. or something like that, and it's it's it actually makes it very hard to ID things and and tell things apart. And what I noticed about this light is when I turned it on, it was a very neutral kind of white, yep, very yep. very natural, almost looked like daylight. 
and the, the yeah. color representation, color representation very, is very really important. good. Yeah, it's yeah. super important, and yeah. it's something that a lot of people don't talk about when it comes to weapon lights. Yeah, it is kind um, of one of those things where, like, kind of got a little bit of a flashlight nerf. We will get into the nitty gritty with it, but having yeah, so right, you know, you know where I'm coming from. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I'm on the same page. And when we were originally designing this, I was like, we got to make sure that we get exactly the right color profiles and LEDs because it's it's one of those things where, like, when you know and you see it, you're like, oh yeah, clearly I need to be using something. Hundred percent. Uh, so this thing, does it have a removable battery? Yep, yep. You just simply take off the rear cell cap. You can put in an eight, a new 186. Uh, or you can simply just leave it in and put it on the Does it take truck. only 18650s? So, so dual, dual fuel, fuel possibility, maybe okay. we're talking about it. Um, it's not that difficult to do. We just have to put in an extra sleeve. Um, mm -hmm. But kind of right now, it's still being discussed. So this will be out Q2 as well. So Q2 as well? The okay. goal is to have a light and a laser for around $1,000. We think if we can kind of come in at that price point, this will really help you know, revolutionize a little bit of the... Uh, well, you sometimes know, you can't even get the laser for that much. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And so it's just one of those things where, as you know, at Holliston, our biggest focus is on listening to our customers and giving them what they're asking for. And we hear you guys say, we know that everything is very expensive in the marketplace. And yes. so we're trying to yes. offer some better options for everybody. Especially for us in Canada, it doesn't help. I, yeah, exactly. I know that that price just creeps up very yeah, quick for you guys yeah, over yeah. there. So. so another question, and you've probably been asked this today already, is are there plans for different heads, IR, different throws? We're different discussing it. It like might be a potential situation. Right now that head is not removable on the current body design. Okay. Um, but we've also been talking about, hey, what about a 21700 battery? So increasing the wow. thickness to match the outer bezel, you're not really losing a whole bunch, you gain a lot more extra run time. Interesting. So some interesting ideas. This might change in its final iteration uh, depending upon what we get with it. Okay. But different heads have been discussed to help additionally with the IR side of things. Okay, very cool. And going back to the switches, are these gonna be offered separately? Oof. Now that's a great question that I don't <laughs> necessarily know the answer to. I'm hoping that we can do that. Our accessories are kind of one of those things where uh, we don't really like push those very hard as products for our uh, vendors to stock and stuff like that. We usually just include them with the items. Fair. But if there's enough demand from the users out there and you guys are like, hey, we really like this switch, we want to buy it from you guys, I'm sure we're not going to say no. So. I mean, I think you should. This this is a pretty nice switch. I actually <laughs> really the like this. Switch. I'll show you one. After. This is probably the best switch that I've seen come out with uh, out of the box of the laser. It's pretty we're, good. We're yeah. trying to, you know, uh, put our best foot forward with everything that we're doing, and it comes down to just really the smallest of details. Awesome. You know, paying attention to what your customers want. So let's get into the last thing we're going to go over today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you drop this on on the gram, I I was like, what the. It's 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 a relatively unique and very interesting idea. So the yeah. whole concept of this is take our DRS thermals and shrink them to where they fit on a pistol. And so the design approach for it is uh, honestly incredible. The engineers are like wizards. Every year I'm like, how are we going to come up with something this new? This is definitely and some wizard do. brain ideas. A hundred percent. Yeah. So <laughs> the idea with this is this is going to act as your thermal sensor the same way that this one is sitting on top of this. It mounts to the bottom of the gun in the flashlight slot. So you're like, oh, I lose my flashlight. No, we built a flashlight in it for you as well, too. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know so, the, yeah. I didn't so, the built in Yeah, flashlight. we built the flashlight okay, in there as okay. well. <laughs> so this now is going to sit on top of your slide. They wirelessly communicate with each other. So the okay. thermal sensor is sending data to the OLED screen. OLED screen is projecting that onto it the same way that it works with our, uh, our DRS series. So just miniaturizing the overall thing. This is an enclosed optic, so basically take a 507C and a 509C, so it's nice smash and them together. contained against the environment and everything exactly. like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have a lot of technology in here and we don't want to have any additional elemental concerns. No, for sure. And plus with the fact, you know, like I said, this is a very early prototype. I mean, yes. We have been playing with this for a very short amount of time, so it's going to take us a while to get these out. So I'll say it here and now, release time, probably next year. I mean, and there's... Anytime you put this much technology on a slide and explosions are going off, uh, there's just a lot more things to take into I mean, uh, wireless connected thermal for a pistol was not exactly on my shot show <laughs> bingo list. Yeah. It's pretty to be crazy. To be honest, yeah. when the engineer sent us this, I was just like, whoa, like I didn't I didn't know we could do that. So that's pretty incredible. So, so a few questions about this product. And yeah. I know it's still in its very early prototyping yeah. stage, but how do you deal with the offset of the image? Like, like this one is kind of makes sense. It's right here. Right. I know this one. There's, there's some pretty big brain ideas going on online where yep. people are thinking of using this as maybe a piggyback mount on a... On a 12 o'clock or offset or something. Yeah, on totally. PBO, yeah. And then this offset or something like that. So right. is there something inside to deal with that offset? So one of the interesting things about this in its current form is the fact that it's meant to be held out at arms like this. It's on a pistol, right? So the okay. eye relief in terms of what you see in the screen. Right. At that distance, we have a mode in here that's called like, it's like super wide FOV. So it's like a 0 0.03 and it just really expands it quite oh, a bit. Wow. Okay. So you can see more through it. So by doing that in here, this sensor is not as much of an issue with the like height over bore situation. I see, I see. Yeah. So this having an independent reticle as well too, we can zero the reticle that's in this that you see inside the screen independently. 
Um, so it's just got so many different bells and whistles in here. White hot, black hot. Um, probably we'll do video recording at some point. I, mean, yeah, I, I don't that's know. That's pretty it's standard just, for thermals. There's so much incredible stuff that we're packing in this uh, in this current form. I mean, it's uh, we I, I immediately got one and put it on a flux uh, with the iris, and I'm just like, this yeah. is so much fun. Like I can't not. <laughs> yeah, that's this, so. that's pretty insane. <laughs> um, in terms of this product as well, um, what's the battery life on this guy? Because it's used, it's connecting wirelessly and it's doing thermal, and we don't right. know thermals are a little power hungry. So yeah, so we're looking the, at here. the runtime on the unit right here takes an 18 three fifty, so it's about five hours, uh, about half of what our normal standard that's is. That's still quite impressive. Yeah, we have two yeah. 18 three fifties in this one. Okay, so it's about half. The difficulty is when you send the signal wirelessly to this small of an optic, I can't exactly fit an 18350 in here. So on the side here in this battery tray, it's much taller and we have a lipo cell that's built in there. I see. So you can just pull that out and they basically recharge it. So runtime on the actual optic itself to be able to use thermal in conjunction with it, honestly not 100% sure. I would say that right now we're getting around anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes of use and runtime, which sure. is not a very crazy amount of time, but honestly, these are the very first ones I've had a chance to play with. Yeah, these are we're still only gonna make more very time. early in the prototyping yeah, phase. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the fact that this is even possible right, is right, yeah. some space age stuff, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, every time, like I said, the engineers just, they're incredible with the uh, ideas and concepts they come up with. And so I can't wait to see what we come out with next year. I mean, this year for us is obviously gonna be a really cool lineup. And I think uh, hopefully we continue to expand inside of that night vision and digital and IR world, because I think it's a, uh, it's definitely the future of technology and thermals by far are kind of leading the way in that side of the industry. Oh yeah, I mean, you guys are crushing it. I can tell by the, uh, the <laughs> audience at your booth that you guys are oh, attracting man. a lot of people. Yeah. And I, my, this is, my voice just sitting here talking to people yeah, all day. Yeah, I can imagine how tired you are. And this, <laughs> this is incredible. Yep. Anyways, Josh, man. Yeah. Thank you so much everybody for watching and thank you for your time. That was really insightful. Yeah, 100%. And looking forward to having all these in the future at Cold Harvest Supply.